Okay, can you get him back there, though? We spotted a goo. Oh. Go ahead, fourth race, Lou. Oh, man. Uh, wait one. Uh, we'll get this man out for right Yeah. Stress associated with the uncertainty of combat led to the abuse of a variety of drugs during the Vietnam War. One of the outcomes of this was that the U.S. government then provided a number of grants to study the nature of drug addiction and the neural mechanisms involved. <laughs> many, many people had been using heroin in Vietnam. What was heroin? How did heroin work? These were issues which had always been of interest to scientists, but they suddenly became also of interest to politicians who then started to give money for research in these areas. They gave it at exactly the right time. The Vietnam grants went to researchers who were beginning to find out just how drugs turn different nerve cells on or off. The drugs were working through receptors. All of what happened in terms of our understanding of these receptors, in terms of our understanding of the things which would interact with the receptors, took place really because of one man, a man named Hans Kosterlitz, who works right here in Aberdeen, Scotland, in this building right across the way. The man was over 70 when he said, it's now time to do my secret idea, to look for a morphine in the brain. One day, when I, I was working in the laboratory, and one of my young students came to see me, and then he asked me, now, why do you do that? Why are you interested in morphine and, and things? Why? Obviously, we all know something about it. I hesitated. I didn't want to say what I really thought, but this young man forced me, and I said, well, you know, if you keep it to yourself and don't tell anybody, there, I have a suspicion there may be a morphine-like substance in the, in the brain. Now, that was in the early 60s. And in 1972... Hans Kosterlitz found his natural morphine. It was an incredibly simple experiment. It simply involved a strip of muscle, the effect of an extract of the brain changing the way that muscle contracted. But it really wasn't so simple because it was a totally prepared mind. It was a lifetime of effort. The substance produced naturally in the brain affected the strips of muscle just as heroin had. the brain's own morphine. Heroin, the molecules had identical recognition sites. So that's why an extract from a poppy can affect the brain. The brain itself naturally uses something similar. From the studies which were done here in Aberdeen, where two morphine-like substances were discovered, we now know that the brain may have a couple of dozen morphine-like materials doing all sorts of things. They may be involved in pain, may be involved in temperature regulation, blood pressure. They may be important in addiction, but they may also be important in depression, in psychoses, in all sorts of bodily processes. They're critical to human beings and they may be among the most important neurotransmitters that are present in our brain. 